Hey everybody, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today, it's going to be Vector Man for the Sega Genesis. Uh, actually, a Let's Play I've been meaning to do for probably several years now. Um, this is a game I actually really, really enjoy in the Sega Genesis. Um, probably up there with being one of my favorite Genesis games. Um, the game does get a little repetitive, the backgrounds get a little repetitive. Uh, but I think the gameplay just feels really satisfying from a basic action-oriented perspective. Uh, and it's also got some really nice graphical effects and whatnot, as you can see here, just right from the even the options screen. Uh, there's some cool stuff going on here. And um, looks like you got three difficulty modes. Wicked is the normal difficulty. And I usually have a hard time beating this game consistently, uh, at least in terms of the last couple of stages I have trouble with in particular. So I'm going to leave it on the standard difficulty mode. Um, but yeah, I man, Vector Man is a really cool game, and uh, it was very, very late release for the Genesis, but from what I can tell, uh, it actually did pretty well for the Genesis. I think it sold pretty decently. It's a relatively easy game to come by, and Sega also re-released it under their Sega hits. I, I totally forgot what they called it. <laughs> Basically, the equivalent to the Sony PlayStation Greatest Hits line, but for the Sega Genesis. Um, and... Uh, you know, so there are a lot of copies of this game floating out, out there. Uh, it got re-released and so forth. Um, there was even a sequel to the game. Uh, unfortunately, the sequel I never really got into. Um, so that's on my to-do list of, um, you know, old games to experience. Uh, probably later this year, even, is uh, Vector Man 2. I did try to play it in the past, and uh, I didn't find the level design to be nearly as interesting as... Uh, it was in the first game, but then again, I didn't really play past the first or second level on Vector Man 2, so uh, if any of you guys out there have played Vector Man 2 and you can give a good synopsis on the game, uh, tell me what you think of it compared to the first one. If it's just kind of more the same, if the level design is worse, or if it's actually better and I just don't know, um, post a comment and let me know. I am curious. So one of the cool things about Vector Man, I mean, you can basically shoot in all directions. And one of the things I really like is uh, if you hold down an attack when you're on a hill, like Vector Man will shoot up, like diagonally up by default, which is really cool. It makes um, uh, battles on a hill much easier than it would be in a, you know, a traditional action platformer, run and gun kind of game or something like that. So it's really cool stuff. Uh, Vector Man, also, if you jump, he sort of like, you can do a double jump, and his animation is great in this game. If you, uh, shoot downwards in the air, you sort of like float down, so it's like the safer way to go down. And like, if you're like falling down to an area and you can't see below, you kind of want to like keep shooting downwards. Because one, you're going to be shooting at enemies that might be down there, but two, it gives you more time to actually see what's down there as you're falling down, and it's, um... A really cool uh, attention to detail, I think. And you guys know me. You know I like my attention to detail in the games, in games I play. I like these flags. Look at how well they animate. You know, just lots of attention to detail in this game. And the game really does look great. I think it holds up pretty well um, for a Sega Genesis game. Even the way, like, the TVs animate as you shoot them. Um, it's really good stuff. And um, uh, in that regard, I think Vector Man's actually aged rather gracefully, which is pretty cool. Um, in some areas, it hasn't aged very gracefully in terms of um, the repetitious nature of just the game itself. Like, this background you see for the first level is really cool stuff, but they reuse it like four or five times throughout the, the course of the game. They just give it a different color palette, and that's it. So there are some downsides like that. Um, but aside from that, you know, the game just it plays so great. It's so much fun to play. Um... So, I haven't really done a whole lot of explaining yet, but these TVs here, they basically host uh, power-ups and so forth. Like this power-up here that turns me into uh, basically a bomb, and it'll blow up walls like that. Usually revealing power-ups of some kind, like another TV. Uh, I believe you get bonuses if you can beat uh, the levels with, you know, getting the most amount of TVs and so forth. Uh, I don't usually go for all of them because... Uh, you are kind of limited on time in this game. Like, as you can see, I've got a minute and 30 left. And so I basically need to start booking it. Otherwise, I'm going to lose uh, lose my time. Oh, no, just got more time. I can I can calm down again. we got three and a half minutes now. Uh, these little uh, round things right here, this is actually health. 
So really good to pick those up because um, typically I don't I don't remember the checkpoints being that great in this game. So you know you definitely don't want to die if you uh, if you don't have to. So the other cool little thing that you can do in this game is when you jump on top of an enemy, it actually deals a lot of damage. See, just like that. You can kill a lot of enemies in one hit by doing that, but it is risky. But it is something that's really good to know. If you're just falling and you happen to land, like, right on top of an enemy, um, you know, you could try to kill them that way. <clears throat> it might be a little strict with his timing to do a lot of damage with your jump boosting or your double jump. But I have killed uh, several enemies over the course of, you know, my years playing this game in one hit. Uh, with that attack, which is pretty cool. Uh, you've also got a uh, scoring system in this game. You've got multipliers and so forth. So right now, I'm at two times scoring, and it's actually about to go away. Uh, I've gotten up to like 5x scoring, maybe even 10x scoring. It gets kind of crazy. Uh, and I haven't really dived into the scoring system too much. I usually just play these games for survival. Because usually they're... they're more than enough challenge uh, just to survive through and vector man is no exception <clears throat> all right one level down many more to go So Vector Man has a lot of like diversion levels, like little mini levels like this. Uh, on this level you need to shoot this dude's hands and then shoot over to the side so you can defeat the uh, the little objects that are flying up to the right and left because they shoot at you. These levels typically just show off like the neat graphical effects they've cooked up. Um, but they can be a little challenging as well, and they're usually very easy to get overwhelmed by and and fail at, so It's really good to know the strategy for each one and You know attack them accordingly basically So a little bit of a secret here you can go through there get another TV And that basically just gave me some health, which I didn't really need. I had full health already, but... Oh. Not anymore. <clears throat> if you want to get through Vector Man consistently, uh, my mantra would be to take things relatively slow. Not super slow. Like, you want to keep moving, but as you're moving, constantly shoot. And then stop every now and then. Um, you don't want to just keep moving, uh, cause then you're just gonna run into enemies, you're gonna run into bullets that they fire. And before you know it, you're gonna die. You're gonna lose your health, you're gonna lose your last life, and you're gonna game over. Um, uh, the reason it's important to take it slow, the biggest reason is that you get no continues in this game. By default. There might be a continue code, but I've never looked into it, and if there is one, I've never used it. Um, so, you know, when I play this game, I want to be able to beat the game. I don't want to just play through, like, half the game or a third of the game or, oh god, like, get to the end of the game and get a game over. That's just never a good feeling. Uh, I want to be able to beat the game when I play it, especially when I'm doing a Let's Play like this. So, you know, my matcher is to take this game relatively slow. And if you do move fast, always run and gun. Always run and gun at the same time. If you're running but not gunning... Uh, you're gonna get hit, you're gonna get hurt, and then you're gonna die. And that's just kind of how games like this operate. And if you're running and gunning and you see an enemy, you should probably stop running, but keep gunning. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if you see an enemy as you're running, stop. Just duck. Usually ducking, is, ducking and attacking is usually a good form of attacking in this game. Because a lot of enemies will shoot projectiles over your head. So that's also something to, to keep in mind. Thank you. 
So certain power-ups like that, like the swimming power-up, um, they basically make you invincible from what I can tell. So when I get those, a lot of times what I like to do is just take advantage of the speed they offer and just kind of bolt through the level. I'm not always about getting all the power-ups and stuff like that. I mean, it's nice getting them, but I really don't want to run out of time. And that's actually happened to me a lot more often than I would like. So it is something you have to be really careful about, is, you know, running out of time. So, here's another one-time use power up here. Kind of does a lot of damage. Kills everything on screen, basically. Not really all that useful there. I mean, there was only <laughs> two enemies on the screen, so... I'm surprised they only put uh, so few enemies on the screen. Oh, then again, we got a few enemies here. Maybe that's what it was intended for. There's our times 10 multiplier. Look at that. Down next to my timer, it says times 10. Oh, we got it again. Let's just take advantage of that. Now, killing enemies does actually drop health pellets, so if my life is getting low and I see a lot of enemies in the playfield, I do try to take them out uh, in hopes of, you know, getting my health back. Ooh, like these guys right here. Guys like these will usually constantly spawn. You might have to push them off screen and then come back just like that. There we go. See, there's some health right there. Ooh, it only gave me one. Okay, we'll do it again. And we'll do it again. That's enough. We're going to run out of time if I keep doing that. Alright, there's more health. Cool. And that one gave me two. So, we're in, we're in good shape now. Now we're back up to max health, and I uh, just beat the level. So, so it's good. We got all our health back. We've got five lives, and uh, we're in good shape. So I think, yeah, this is our first cave level. And uh, after this, there's a... Uh... Oh no, I'm thinking of a different stage. I'm thinking of the stage after this one. Okay. So this level, what I typically like to do is just fly right to the top. Um... This is a level you can really get distracted by, uh, with all the power-ups and so forth, and all the enemies you can kill. Enemies are points, so if you're trying to play for score, you know, killing all those enemies is good. Especially if you get some nice multipliers. And same with these little, uh, icons you get. These are point icons. Every one is worth 10 points. Uh, but if you get a multiplier, those 10 points are multiplied by, well, obviously your multiplier, so... If you get a 10x multiplier, you want to be picking up everything on the playfield if you can, uh, if you're playing for score. But what I typically like to do is just go up, because this level, there's so much you can get bonus-wise on this level. Um, a lot of times, I just go straight up like this, just to get it over with, because Vector Man is... It's not really a short game, all things considered. I mean, it's going to take you, I think, at least an hour to beat this game. So for me, it's kind of like, well, yeah, if it's going to take an hour for me to beat, I'm not going to uh, risk losing my lives. I'm losing my time than losing my lives. Um, 
because I don't want to spend an hour just to not beat the game, you know? It's one thing if I'm just learning the game for the first time, but if I if I know a game like this, like I don't want to play it and just not beat it. You know, I want to do what I can to, to finish the game, so. So here's our boss. This, this boss actually has two forms. And you basically just want to follow this pattern. And the second form is this bear. Not a very difficult boss. But there are some bosses later on in the game that are actually pretty challenging, so... You, or at least, maybe not so much challenging as they are very easy to die at if you mess up. So... And now we're at our follow-up cave level. Which, one thing you'll notice about uh, later levels in this game is there's a lot of, like, these little popcorn bug-like bug-like enemies and you have to be really careful around them they typically constantly spawn if you go off screen and come back they'll come they'll they'll also come back see there they are and it's very easy to just run right into them uh, because it is difficult to see them a lot of the times so again that just kind of is a testament to my sort of Take it slow, Matra. <laughs> you know, just don't go go in guns blazing. Well, I mean, go in guns blazing. Just take your time when you're going in guns blazing. Um, you know, otherwise, just like I did right there, I ran into an enemy, lost some health, um, and I really don't like to get hit in this game because there's points where it's actually hard to get your health back. Really like these graphical effects, by the way. I like the rain. It's cool stuff. Alright, so one cool thing here is you've got these satellites, and if you find, um, like, the core for the satellite, or, like, the receiver, or whatever you want to call it, the transmitter, um, it'll remove the shield from the satellite, and then if you go and destroy the satellite, uh, you'll be warped out to a bonus stage, which is really cool. Uh, and you know what's interesting? I actually didn't find out about that until recently, where I accidentally destroyed one and got zapped off to a bonus stage. And I was like, oh man, that's awesome. So, there's some cool stuff to be had in the game. Some cool little Easter eggs like that. Uh, and there's a bunch of those satellites over the course of the game. So you have the potential to get to a lot of different bonus levels in this game. This guy, you need to destroy his tail first. And then you can get behind him and just blow him away. Kind of like that. Whoa, thought that was it. Apparently not. There we go. So 
So no bonus stage, but I might get to another one later on. We'll see. I'm going to try, but I'm not going to try that hard. <laughs> you guys know me. I shoot low. <laughs> so we're probably... I'd say we're probably halfway through the game now. Maybe we're a little bit farther and I'm just, you know, misremembering. Again, run and gun, but stop if you see an enemy. Don't just keep running, because enemies don't die instantly in this game, typically. Um, I mean, you've got the little popcorn enemies, sure. Um, but for the most part, um, a lot of the enemies are bigger enemies. They take a bunch of hits. So you need to be careful when you're running. And again, when you're falling like that, shoot downwards. Um, that way you don't just fall right on top of an enemy, or if you do, you're at least shooting at them, you're dealing some damage. Alright, so here's a boss. I believe this boss we can just sh shoot from the top. And every time you shoot him at the top, he unleashes these, like, fireballs. So you can kind of control how the boss fight plays out. If he gets close, I think you want to jump over him. But if you do what I'm doing right here, you can sort of just kind of stun him in place. Bam, got him. Look at that. Perfect. Not even a single hit. But yeah, if he corners you, you don't want to shoot him. You want to jump over him, double jump over him, and then get to the other side and rinse and repeat. Uh, not my favorite bonus stage in the game. Not really a bonus stage. It's an actual stage, technically. Very easy to die on this level. Ooh, beat it though. Again, really cool graphical effects in some of these like side stages. Or like diversion stages, if you want to call them that. But uh, they're also usually really short and it's very easy to die on them. And here's where the game basically starts repeating itself. As you can see, this is the exact same background from the very first stage, except it's just a different color palette now. Now, I definitely need some help. Oh, I mean health. And that was at uh, just as good a place as any is to, to try to get some health. These little popcorn enemies that come out. These little bugs. Well, they were coming out. Let's go back and see if they reappear.
There you go. There's some health. Bam, full health. I don't know if it's just a thing that happens later on in the game. Uh, but later on in the game, it seems like when enemies give you health, they give you a lot of health. Whereas early on in the game, it seems like they just give you like one pellet. So you need to sit there and kind of grind them out uh, a little bit more, a little bit longer. But here, it's just like you get a piece of health and it actually fills up your whole health bar. Which is pretty nice. Oh, and here's our, um... Actually, I, I... Ooh, okay. This is our, uh, con contraption we need to destroy if you want to go to the bonus stage. Now, the question is finding the satellite. I don't know where the satellite is. And with kind of running out of time, I'm not sure if I want to try to find it. Let's go back. We got seven lives. Yeah, I missed it. Uh, I guess we had to go back even farther to get to the satellite. Or maybe it was higher up, and I just didn't do any exploration, but... We basically destroyed uh, the shield generator. I guess it's probably a shield generator, now that I think about it. That makes more sense. Um, and that would have zapped us off to a bonus stage. And what's really cool about the bonus stages in this game is that they're modeled after... Kind of like old Atari 2600 games. Um... but in, like, the Vector Man style, which is really cool. So at this point, I don't really care about getting all the TVs and stuff. We're good in lies, we're good on time, we're good on health. I'm just kind of like, yeah, whatever. You know? I mean, if I see a TV, I'm going to take it. But I'm not going to go after every single one. Like, I see the, the ones hidden down below and whatnot. I don't really care about them too much. I just want to get to the boss, beat the stage, get to the next level, and and so f and so on. And is this our boss? Yep, this is our boss. A common trait with the bosses in this game is that you typically have to shoot them, double jump over them shoot them some more, double jump over them again, and literally just rinse and repeat over and over. And 
And this boss, funny enough, is actually quite reminiscent of uh, a boss in Batman and Robin for the Sega Genesis, which coincidentally also came out the same year as this game. That's a another fantastic Sega Genesis game. Late release, it's a good technical showpiece, as well as a really good-looking and good-sounding game. It's also fun to play. I highly recommend Batman and Robin on the Sega Genesis if you haven't played it. Uh, and I also have a full Let's Play in that game if you'd like to check it out. Really, really cool game. Alright, so we're making our way through Vector Man. We're making good progress now. So again, here's another pallet swapped first level, and we're gonna we're gonna encounter at least one more of these. So for the sake of repetitiveness, let's just try to get through this as quickly as we can. Of course, if I see a TV, I'm going to get the TV because it could be extra time, it could be health, it could be yet another extra life. Which, at this point in the game, I don't think we need any more extra lives, but... Uh, the last time I got to the final boss, I actually had a really hard time at him, so... You know, I'm going to take every extra life I can get. If I can get it. If I can get an extra life, I'll take it. If I don't, then whatever. You know, so if there's a TV, like, up here, I'm going to go for it. That's right, I remember this. The rocket that takes you nowhere because <laughs> you're in, like, small corridors. Uh, but there was another satellite, so if we find the, uh... If we find the shield generator, we'll go back and get it, but I don't think we will. I think we probably passed it. But that leaves it for you to find if you decide to play this game yourself. Because a lot of you guys will watch these videos and then go try them out for yourself, so... It's at this point in the Let's Play, I'm kind of like, yeah, I just want to beat the game now and get it over with, because... <laughs> I get 30 minutes in and I start to lose interest, or I'm like, oh man, I've been sitting here for too long, I need to take a break. But, when you're doing a Let's Play, you can't just take a break. <laughs> Alright, so this boss is kind of a pain in the ass. The best way to beat him is just to be kind of reckless about it, I found. Um, and we just got our first death as a result, but... See, you can destroy him really, really quickly if you're reckless. In the right kind of reckless, like you're being productive reckless. <laughs> um, the correct term is probably tanking. You know, you want to tank and just take damage uh, to defeat him quickly. Look at that. That life pellet only gave me one. So maybe certain enemies give you more health. Whereas like TVs might give you less health. Or, or maybe it just depends. Maybe the programmers went in and like configured every single TV and enemy set. You know, like, oh, okay, this enemy set gives you full health. And um, this one doesn't. Or something like that. I have no idea. It's possible they went that deep with it. Like I just had three health pellets dropped. And uh, each of them only gave me one health pellet back. Man, that's cool. Like, I didn't realize the, um, the bomb ever bounced that high when you fell to the ground. That's pretty neat. It's like a spun, not spongy, but like, like a bouncy, bouncy, uh, bouncy grenade. Like rubbery, a rubbery, uh, bomb. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it's like a, <laughs> a racquetball bomb.
See, if I was playing for score right now, I'd be going crazy trying to pick up everything. Because I'm at uh, times five scoring right now. So... Oh, look at that. That guy gave me full health. And that's it. Not, not some very long levels towards the end here. You know, if you rush through them, you can, uh... You can destroy uh, the stages pretty quickly and just like demolish them as you go through them. And I picked up a lot of the power-ups too, which was interesting. As as quickly as I rolled through that stage, you know, it just dawned on me this might, you know, Vector Man could potentially be an interesting speed running game. I'd like to see somebody run this game and see what they can do with it. That could be really interesting. If any of you guys out there watching are speedrunners, I uh, hereby challenge you to run this game and report back to me with your findings. <laughs> I'm sure it's been done already, but uh, you know, that said, maybe I should just look into seeing if there are Vector Man speedruns out there. That'd be pretty cool, I think. I mean, you've got runs of games like Rystar, so I think it'd be cool to see Vector Man run. You'd have to really memorize the stages for sure. I could really use some health right now. Somehow. And there's some more health. So it seems like this power-up I have is actually a shield, which is really good. Because uh, you can't take damage. Helicopter kind of power up. Ooh, extra life. <laughs> We're up to 13 lives. Look at that. Man, I don't think I've ever had that many lives in this game. I wonder if it ever caps out. Or I wonder what the maximum you can get, like, over the course of a great game. Okay. Yeah, we're getting close to the end, guys. There's only a couple more stages. So again, like a lot of the other stages, I'm just going to kind of rush through this. We've got so many lives to burn. Of 
course, watch me regret it at the final boss. Go through, like, all 13 lives. It's happened before in Let's Plays, so... Really, I probably shouldn't be jinxing myself. But screw it, I got all my health back magically, I don't know how. Might have been that last enemy I destroyed. He might have dropped a health pellet, and I just have to be on top of him when I killed him. Oh, man. Alright, so now that we're down, we gotta work our way back up. It's one of those vertical levels. And we got a secret area up here. Another one up. <laughs> oh, this is so nauseating. <laughs> oh, boss time already. Oh, damn. I always forget how to beat this form. Just like, uh. Man. Uh, is he coming back? Okay, cool. Second form. Alright, so this guy is kind of weird. You just kind of run the, uh, the far end of each side. Your jump has to be perfect every single time. You know, again, like I mentioned earlier on in the video, this is one of those, you know, the bosses later on in the game, you have to be on point. You see how close I come every single time? But you have to give yourself enough room to wind up and jump. Otherwise, you're gonna hit him. He's gonna kill you. Nice. First try. Normally that boss takes a couple tries for me. But in this case, that was pretty good. Alright, I think this is actually the, the final stage. And then uh, we go to the final boss after this level. game was like, come up here, you know you want to, and then you jump up and it's just enemies right in your face. Instant death if you have no, no health. There's actually quite a few surprise enemies on this level that'll just 
they seem unavoidable, which is one thing I don't like about this last level. But knowing that going in definitely helps. You sort of, like, are more aware when you play the stage. Like, there's the, uh, the little fire extinguisher-looking enemies. They're constantly, like, bouncing up and, and whatnot. Um... And they'll basically just take you completely by surprise. And these little, like, elevator things you have to take down. Yeah, that little fire hydrant guy, he always got me when I would practice this game. Ugh. It's one of those surprise enemies. And that's it. Alright, we should be at the final boss now. Whew, Vector Man, man, it's a long journey. Like, it's a, I think it's a great game, but man, it really wears on you by, like... The last third of the game, you're just like, ah. Oh. Basically, 16 stages. Granted, a lot of them are like mini stages, so they don't take very long to beat, but there's just so much in this game, it, uh, it definitely wears on you. I'm gonna go ahead and just die because I had no health. So there was no point in trying this without any health.
So this guy, you kind of want to stay on top of these uh, floating rooftops. And not dip below, because if you dip below, you lose control. Um, and you basically get flung all the way back up to the top. Kind of like this, and it's very easy to just get damaged by the boss. Wow, we beat him on the first try. It's crazy. The last time I got here, it took me like seven lives, and I beat him on my final life. So, I'm really surprised I beat him on my first try. Oh, man. <sighs> well, guys, that is Vector Man. Not the most amazing in ending, unfortunately. It's uh, very typical of many 16-bit games to have very lacking endings. Um, a lot of times, sur surprisingly, these games that take like an hour or more to beat in one sitting, um, and they have no continues or passwords, they're always the ones that have the worst endings, it seems. <laughs> Although at least it shows you all the enemies and stuff like that, which is pretty cool, so... The fire extinguisher guys are called Jaws. <laughs> and there's an enemy called Margie. <laughs> there's some goofy enemy names in this game. There's some pretty standard names too, like Submarine and Mecha Jellyfish. But then you got Sludge Barge. So... But yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Play. If you have any questions about this game, feel free to post them below. If you've played uh, either this or Vector Man 2, feel free to post a comment and uh, let me know your thoughts on the games. I'm really curious to know what people think about Vector Man 2 in particular because I've never really gotten very far in the game. It just it never grabbed me like the first one. Maybe because it was just... It felt like more of the same, but not even as well designed. Um, you know, it just... Yeah, didn't really have that appeal to me, if you know what I mean. Uh, but maybe I should give it a try. So, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the game. <sighs> that sketch of Vector Man in the background actually reminds me of the remade Vector Man they were working on in the early 2000s. For, I guess it was Xbox and PS2 and whatnot. Uh, that game was ultimately cancelled. Probably for the better, because Vector Man's design, if that was anything to go by, it was not very good. Um, not very appealing, anyway, but... Yeah. <sighs> Alright, guys, well, I want to go ahead and wrap it up here. Thanks again for watching. Uh, if you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe. I've got many more Let's Plays on my channel, and long plays, and... Uh, let's play like videos as well as reviews and so forth you guys can check out and even 70 podcast episodes on there as well if you're new to my channel there's lots of content here for you waiting to be discovered and for everybody else I know that probably sounded really cheesy but uh, I gotta do it and uh, for all you guys out there that already are subscribed thank you as always uh, I appreciate the continued support and uh, I'll catch you guys soon on the next video so Take it easy, guys.